All right, my beautiful people, thanks so much for tuning in to the Money Mind Shift. This is ZRGJ, Certified Financial Educator, and we are going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Saibo. Steve, I'm coming from my check. Here's the deal, guys. Wealth begins in the mind. That's right. Wealth begins in the mind. You must be wealthy in your mind long before you're wealthy in your wallet. That's right. You must be wealthy in your mind long before you're wealthy in your wallet. Now, um, here's the deal, man. I, I can tell people to go get this book, go read it. I can recommend it all day long. But what I've come to understand is that people simply just won't go do it. So what I decided to do was take a different approach and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start this show so we can actually go through the book together. 15 minutes a day, guys. 15 minutes is all it takes to keep broke away. That's right. 15 minutes a day. So people always ask me, ERGJ, Certified Financial Educator, how'd you go from being a financial zero to being a financial hero? Well, the way that I did it was I began to read, read things about money, read things about finances, and I applied it to my life. And so I'm just sharing with you some things that helped me to get out of debt. They helped me to build wealth and, 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 uh, and actually accumulate assets. It's up to you what you're going to do with it. So 15 minutes a day to keep broke away. So we're now on day 48 of our 100-day journey. That's right, day 48. We got 52 more days to go after this, and it's just 15 minutes a day. Can't hang, in, can't hang in there with me today. Well, we'll see. Well, here's the deal. I know you don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. Day number 48, let's get it. Middle class believes the rich are obsessed with money. The world class believes the rich are obsessed with success. That's right. The middle class believes that the rich are obsessed with money. The world class believes that the rich are obsessed with success. The average person believes obsession is a bad word. The truth is wealthy people have a healthy obsession with getting what they want, which includes money. Materialism is only part of their motivation. The strongest for most is the freedom to do what they want when they want it. The world class sees business and life as a game, and it's a game they love to win. This is the reason millionaires still go to work every day chasing their next success. Money to these people is no more than a gauge that tells them when they have achieved their latest target. Most of the money the rich earn will be passed down to heirs or charity. So it's difficult to be obsessed with money you're never going to spend. It's more about success and accomplishment. That's right, guys. For the rich, it's more about success and accomplishment. It's not that there's anything wrong with being obsessed with wealth. It's just it's not the primary. It's the, it isn't the primary motivator for most millionaires after they reach a certain net worth. So here's my question to you guys. What level of at what point in your net worth, as you journey, as you get become more wealthy, as you become more prosperous, what is the number for you that you believe is going to put you in a position where money is no longer important? I mean, when I say it's no longer important, it's no longer as important. See, most people, it's like they're always striving after money because they don't have any. But when you become rich, when you become a millionaire, when you become whatever that number is for you, money has become secondary because you've already have more than enough. So then what's going to motivate you? See, most people are motivated by money. At this point in my life, I'm motivated by the mission. And see, some people can't get to the mission because they're still focused on how they're going to pay their rent. But when you become rich, when you work hard at getting wealthy, then money has become a secondary priority for you. It's no longer as important. The things that are important to you are going to be the things that you want to accomplish or do. So money, again, it's nothing wrong with being obsessed with wealth. It just isn't the primary motivator for most millionaires after they reach a certain net worth. What is that number for you? What is that net worth number for you? And, and hopefully you know how to calculate net worth. Now, this number is different for everyone, but the phenomenon is the same. Winners love to win. That's right. Winners love to win. And the elation they experience after victory never gets old. The masses don't understand this because they've never had enough money to make it a secondary priority in their lives. It's hard to see life as a game when you can't pay your phone bill. It's hard to see life as a game when you can't pay your phone bill. So here's a question. How do you see life? See, some people, they see life as a struggle and they wonder why they struggle. For some people, they see life as an adventure and they wonder why they have uh, you know, such an adventurous time in life. For some people, they see life as a game, just like a video game. How do you see life? Is life a circus to you? Is things always going crazy? I mean, how do you see this thing called life, your life, the life that you're living? 
because the way that you see your life is the way that it actually continues to play out for you. If you see your life, if you see life as being uh, this place of evil, well, guess what? You're probably going to be experiencing quite a bit of evil because what you see, how you respond to life is really how life responds to you. So you see if life is being easy, you see it as a game, you see it as adventure, um, you see it as fun. Well, you're probably having some fun in your own life. How do you see life? For most of the millionaires, they see life as a game, and it's a game that they want to win. Is it a game for you that you want to win? That's a great question for you to answer. Now, the masses don't understand it because they've never had enough money to make to make it a secondary priority in their lives. It's hard to see life as a game when you can't pay your phone bill. The rich are masters at getting what they want, and their number one objective is building a substantial net worth so they can shift their focus to higher level pursuits such as personal fulfillment, time freedom, and philanthropy. So what I want you to do is I want you to make your number one pursuit at this point, if you're not already rich, building a substantial net worth. Building a substantial net worth. Now, you got to figure out what that's going to take. You know, what it's going to take for you to build a substantial net worth so that money can no longer be a primary focus of yours. It can still be a, a priority, but not the primary priority. It becomes secondary or it becomes third on the list because you've built up a substantial net worth. I mean, what that what would that feel like to get to that point in your life where you've built up a substantial net worth that money is no longer driving you? Because I find it very sad when I see people that that's all that moves them is money. Oh, I made some money today. I'm doing all of this so I can make some money today. Like their whole day is filled with how can I make more money? Not how can I help more people? Not how can I make a difference in this world? Not how can I find a way to be happy? It's more about, hey, I want to make a little bit of extra money. And we know what that leads to. That doesn't lead to a fulfilling life. That leads to a life that, quite, quite honestly, it's hard to be fulfilled when all you're chasing is money day in and day out. Sad place to be. But for some people, that's just what they do. So this enables them. So what they focus on, once they get to this level of pursuit, they focus on personal fulfillment, time freedom, and giving back, philanthropy. Personal freedom, time freedom, personal fulfillment, time freedom, and philanthropy, which is giving back. Man, what would that be like to have your life full of those three things? You're personally fulfilled. You have your time freedom, which means that you can do what you want when you want. And you can give to whatever organizations you can find a way to give back in whatever way you feel like you want to give back. Man, isn't that a fulfilling life? Isn't that a life worth pursuing? I think so. I think those are the three things that most people are saying they want when they say, I want to quit my job. They want personal fulfillment. They're no longer fulfilled at their job. They feel like they've hit a glass ceiling. They want time for you. They want their freedom back, their time back to be able to spend with their kids or be able to go on vacation or be able to do whatever it is they want to do. And then they want the opportunity to be able to give back in a greater measure than probably what they're able to give back at this point. Now, this enables them to live a lifestyle most people only dream about and experience a level of personal satisfaction most can't even imagine. Now, so here's what we're doing, guys. We're going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Seibo. Steve, I'm coming from my check. And if you want to get this book, you can actually get it through my website, www.ergj.net. I'll leave that in the comments below. Now, in this book, uh, we just finished our day number uh, 40, I think our 48, but they got an action step, a quote, and a critical thinking question of the day. So here's our quote of the day. It's by Ted Turner. It says, life is a game. Money is how we keep score. Ted Turner says that money is a game. I mean, life is a game, and money is how we keep score. Now, here's our critical thinking of the question of the day, something that you want to think about, something that you want to answer for yourself on a scale of one to seven. Seven being the strongest. How strong is your desire to succeed? On a scale of one to seven, seven being strongest. How strong is your desire to succeed? Now, here's the thing. Most people, when they answer this question, they can say, my, my desire is a seven. And I would challenge you to really answer this honestly. Because the truth is, if you really have a strong desire, if you're, if you're saying, hey, I, my desire to succeed is at a seven, it's the strongest in my life then it's going to show up in your behavior, not just in your conversation. See, most people, it's easy to say that I'm, I'm serious about success, but then when you look at their everyday life, they're doing nothing towards being successful. They're laying on the couch. They're watching TV all day. 
They're playing video games. They're surfing the net. They're gossiping, doing nothing constructive or productive towards the success of their very own life. But they'll tell you all day long that they're serious about their success. So I got to ask you this. Not only do you ask yourself this, but I want you to look over your past few days and then answer the question, how serious have you been about success? How strong is your desire to succeed? Because we can just look over your last week and see what type of activity that you put in place to ensure that you succeed towards whatever it is that you're going for. Because I believe success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So how many steps did you take towards your ultimate goal? Do that first. That's going to tell where the road meets the road. Not just what you say, but also what you do. Now, here's your action step of the day. Here's what you want to take away from the day. Here's what you want to actually go and do. You want to think about what you want and what you're willing to sacrifice to get it. Think about what you want and what you're willing to sacrifice to get it. Your discipline and dedication must match your desire. Your discipline and your dedication must match your desire. So let's put everybody put in the comments below. Discipline plus dedication equals desire. And we're only saying equals because we're saying that it must match. So our discipline and our dedication must match our desire. So the action step, once again, says think about what you want and what you are willing to sacrifice to get it. Your discipline and your, your dedication must match your desire. And so again, guys, plenty of people will talk about what it is that they want. Plenty of people will talk about how serious they are about success. But not many people are going to actually show it in their action each and every day. And you can just watch their life. And you're like, man, you're a hypocrite. You say all of this stuff, but you never do anything. But then there's other people, very few, who actually do what's necessary to get the things that they want. And they understand that I'm willing to sacrifice the now for a greater later. Let me repeat that again. I'm willing to sacrifice right now. See, what I decided to do in my life, I said, you know what? I'm going to give up one year of my life. I'm going to do one year of sacrifice in order to have 10 years of harvest. One year of sacrifice is really all it takes. One year of sacrifice for 10 years of harvest. And see, what most people do, they want the 10 years of harvest without sacrificing anything. And they find themselves not getting much. One year of sacrifice for 10 years of harvest. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give up one year of your life to have 10 years of your best life? Because you can grow just like a seed. You're All you're doing, you're saying, you know what? I'm sowing the seed of my current life into the ground. I'm giving up all of my stuff that I think is important to me right now because I have a greater vision of what I want in the future. Think about what you want in life and then think about what are you willing to sacrifice to get it. Your dedication and your discipline must match your desire. Well, here's the deal, guys. Day number 48 is complete. We're on a 100-day journey. We've got 52 more days to go, and we're going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Seibo. Steve, I'm coming for my check. I recommend that you get this book, and if you decide to get it, hey, you can get it through me. It's at www.ergj.net. It's one of my recommended reads. Now, of course, we're going to be starting a new show on Wednesday, so I hope you guys are ready for that, How to Turn Your Dreams into Reality. Uh, we'll be doing that, starting that on Wednesdays. But this is the Money Mind Shift. We're here Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow I got a uh, an event, so I won't be here at 8. I'll be here at 2 tomorrow. Uh, but we'll be going back. We'll be on day number 49. So here's the deal, guys. I'm ERGJ, your certified financial educator. I'll be here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, going through the book, How Rich People Think. And the question is, will you?